so far. We are back with Deserving Dads today. McSorley's Old Ale House. It's oh, a New York institution. It opened back in 1854. One of the oldest pubs in the country, hosting the likes of President Abraham Lincoln to music legends like, like John Lennon. And recently, McSorley's opened its doors to our own icons, Al, <laughs> Carson, and Craig, for a little Father's Day celebration. Okay, thank you. After you, sir. Thank you. Hey, how are you, sir? How are you, it's almost Father's Day. Thoughts turn to your dad. What, what's your greatest memory? Well, I've got two fathers. You know, I lost mine when I was five. He had an old Corvette in 1977, black Corvette with red leather interior. So I have great memories of riding around my father in his Corvette. My other dad, you guys know, yeah. the Caruso, great guy who I lost just last year. My time on the golf course with him, very special memories. My dad was a New York City bus driver. When I was out of school, he would take me into work with him. Hmm. And we'd ride up and down Flatbush Avenue, and we'd stop at Goody's Luncheonette, and he'd buy me about $3 worth of comic books wow. and a, a bag of candy, and that was it. I remember my dad drove a, a 1973 green Pontiac Le Mans, mm. and some of my earliest memories are, are being in the front seat of my dad's car, and this was before seatbelts. Uh, so periodically, yeah. he'd, you know, he'd drive me, he'd have slam on the brakes and like put he, his arm. Yes. I, he was like a human seatbelt. Are there any traditions that were set primarily by your father that you still do today? Man the grill, that's what my, my yeah, mom always cooked, so. but my dad yep. did the grill, you know, that was it. I think about my dad, they uh, wanted us to eat together. Uh, mm. That was just a big point of pride for him, to yeah. have his family around the table after a hard day's work. That's something that I've tried to, to kind of instill in my family. So my dad, his big thing was like fixing the cars. He'd call me over, and I was, you know, six or seven, and I'd hand him tools, and I was still 17 or 18. Like still handing him tools, like yeah. I never got promoted. Yeah, he never thought. He never... <laughs> Were you afraid of your father? I oh, was. Oh yeah. hell yeah, I was. Yeah. I was. And are your children afraid of you? I have no, do not mind being the disciplinarian. I, I think my son is afraid of me, but my daughter, oh, she could care less. How about you? Yeah, they're not afraid. I mean, no. I mean they, they, a little bit, but I mean, not not the way I. But was. your TV's Al Roker. That's, yeah. Well, is there another side that we don't know about? Is it Leela? This was she was maybe ten or eleven, and she just had been really acting up, and I yelled at her, and she burst into tears, and she goes, "This isn't fair. America sees the happy Al Roker. They don't see this Al Roker." You know, and I said, Here's oh, what's happening when I wring your neck. <laughs> 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 I will tell you, the thing that will is, is going to rip your heart out. Preach on. And I'm just going to warn you. I'm going to drink two beers. Yes, you, you are. This. It's it's when your daughter has a boyfriend. Oh, don't and say And not it. just a boyfriend, but you know that it's more than a boyfriend. Oh, no. And it's somebody and, that you don't and, like. And, like or? And, you're, and you're like, I'm going to. You just instinctively. That's when I do that. I roll up his chop. <laughs> You just gotta get the tattoos yeah. going when you go to the door. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, man? What do you hear to see? Let me show you my chef's knives. <laughs> right in the back. I got a hole in the back. You know, and, you just, and it's 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 it, and it's it may be sexist or whatever. I don't know that you feel the same way. But instinctively, you you're you're knucklehead. You know, you're you're an right. idiot. You know, right. you're, you're, you're us. Nobody's good enough. I, I worry that that perhaps our kids are going to grow up soft. My son, if he was eating some yogurt and and he's like, I don't like this yogurt, Daddy. I want Faye. It's like, Faye? You're demanding Faye yogurt at four? He's calling a shot. And in, and in that moment, now this Perrier is a little flat. <laughs> I dare you. My kids are like, one click. When's that going to come, Daddy? I'm like, uh, actually in two days. That's pretty good. Like, no, I want it now. It's like they're all becoming Veruca Sol <laughs> from Willy Wonka, you well, know? I've been very fortunate. But, um... Courtney, Leela, and, and oh, I mean, we Nick does chores. How did you rear your children, though? Because you made a few bucks. Yeah. And I would imagine that your kids probably knew that you made a few bucks. We live in a nice house, but you know, for the longest time, our car was a was a Toyota minivan. I try to live a relatively normal life. You try in in little ways to you know they see mom and dad washing dishes. You know, this is what we do. Right. This is how you. I also live have your a life. philosophy where it's my money. Yeah. Dad's worked hard. Yeah. Like you, you're broke, bro. You have nothing. You have nothing you until have you, right. You recently lost your, your dad. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. How, does, how does that change your outlook? I lost both my mom and my dad in such a short amount of time, and it all happened so fast. One minute they were both pretty healthy, and the next minute my dad got diagnosed end stage cancer. My mom died unexpectedly of a heart attack. It feels like somebody literally just erased my parents from the world, and it takes a little time to get over that. It was really testament to how much the love was there. 
right? So like the more I miss them, it's like, oh my gosh, I miss them so much because they loved me so much and I loved them so much. And ultimately that's a good thing. If you wanted your kids to take away one lesson from you, what would it be? I hope that they're, they're selfless and not selfish. I hope that my kids are, are happy. It's a trite saying, but it's like you're you're only as happy as you're least happy. So true. And I remember, you know, looking sometimes, and my dad would be just sitting on the couch, and he just looked content. I, now I know why he was, because his kids were around, and if they're happy, then I'm happy. That's true. Drink to that. Can I get another round, round by the way? please. Gentlemen, cheers. Happy cheers. Father's Day. Yeah. Okay, what a window, by the way, into you three. I feel like I, I feel like I know you all so well, and I was watching this thinking, wow. Well, we should thank Paul Manson, who yeah. produced that for us, did, and put us in an environment drinking beers where we really could get lost in a conversation and yeah. just talk. It was real. And Al, you were giving a lot of good advice. I feel like you were kind of the one. I'm the old man. <laughs> so He's a fountain of wisdom. Every time you spend, spend any measurable amount of time without work, you walk away with some, some sort of nugget. We walked away with lots of nuggets. Yeah. Broken clocks right twice a day. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Al. That was fun, though. That was, was. awesome. And Let's happy Father's Day to all the fathers watching. Yes. yes. Yeah. And all the guys who are like fathers. To all yes. The Absolutely. All right. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.